plus. Okay, that seemed to have worked. So theoretically. Okay, well, let's uh, let's do the ceremony in uh, in retrospect. <laughs> oh, you've got about four minutes. Yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, three and a half. Sure. <sighs> Visible on camera, but yeah. glad to see you in the room again. By the uh, room still there. The video there. Is it the video, the camera, not the uh, laptop? But you could sit. No, but he was sitting on camera. I'm sitting on camera. I figure I should be able to sit where I can wave the folks. I see. All right. Just like these, I have to boot your computer and send an email within a three minute time limit. It's too hard. I can't take the pressure. <coughs> uh, let's see. So here's Klaus. Here's the uh, agenda. And here's. I actually printed out a hard copy of the agenda, but I left it on the printer, <laughs> which was clever of me. I'm sure I get the improper use of the ellipsis correct. like magic. Can you read an ODT class? I got your mail. Pleased to hear it. Can you read the file? I'm going to. We'll see. <laughs> Remember what the B said. Another PLA. I remember it used to stand for online debugging technique. I still don't know what this is cut out. Philip's talk, I think it's about how ITC profiler is not going to I guess he'll tell you. Notice the quotes. Yeah. That means it came straight from him. Did you try Googling it? Yeah. And what happened? <laughs> it reminds me of the slightly mis. Reminds me of this television series Prisoner. I remember. What do you want? I want information. I'm sorry, you're not going to get it. All I've got is data. That may not be exactly quoted correctly. You know, this is how you can your data. All right. Live from Stanford University. Hmm. It's the July Silicon Valley Fourth Interest <laughs> Meeting. Normally, this is the time where we would have the uh, ceremonial starting of the recorder. But uh, as you're all aware, the recorder has already been started without due ceremony. So let's move on. I'm so glad to see you all uh, online. I want to reiterate that the main focus of this meeting is the Zoom meeting, this uh, Stanford presence. <laughs> is a little thin today, uh, we'll get it rolling, but this is just the watch party. Uh, and in fact, uh, if, the, if we do have presenters here, they may have to be exiled to the, uh, to the nether regions, to some other nearby conference room uh, to accommodate our uh, 
our conference, our meeting room uh, participation in the Zoom conference. Uh, it's it's good to see you all uh, here. And uh, without further ado, I think we'll get on to the uh, first presentation, which is the uh, monthly challenge. I wanted to say how grateful uh, I am, and we all should be, to uh, to Bill for uh, sustaining this uh, monthly challenge. Uh, and uh, if you have ideas for him for this uh, segment, uh, please uh, feel free to communicate them either uh, to me or through Meetup or uh, directly to Bill. Now I have to find my mute button here. I'm not sure if that's actually possible and see if we can do it without hanging up. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I would add the editorial comment that uh, when you do input from the Stanford end, as Kevin did at the end, if you take the mask off and come closer to the uh, computer, it's much, the sound quality is much, much, much better. And I'm sure you'll not infect that computer with any nasty viruses. Yeah, I think there's actually a rule for speakers that uh, you are allowed to take your mask off and you should. Good. Anyway, perfect, uh, perfect operation. And uh, again, it's refreshing to see life returning to some degree of semblance of normality here. So I will switch over to my screen and we'll begin the challenge. And away we go. So, a few more adjustments. Good. Does does my screen show now with no overlays and and no little blocks up in the upper left corner? Is it is it complete? Looks good. Very good. Okay, that's fine. All right, this is an extension on our work on the word game Wordle. One more click. So the Wordle game, uh, it started about last November by a programmer in England. He developed this game over the course of about five or six months. He and his, his girlfriend, uh, they put it out as a no cost, no charge, public usage game. It caught wildfire. They got into the low millions in users in the matter of a couple of months. And the game was sold to the New York Times for low seven figures, I believe. So that's one or $2 million, something like that. So the purpose of the game, I'll review this. We've done it before, but in case you're new to it, Wordle is you are to guess a five letter word. Now there is a mystery word that you are trying to, um, to determine by guessing words and getting clues. So you'll have uh, six tries to guess what the mystery word is. You'll get a, a letter shown in green as a clue if the letter is in, if a letter is in the correct position. So every green letter is a used letter and it's in the correct position in your guess. And if they highlight it in gold, the letter is used. However, it's in the wrong position and you get added information in that you now know where it is not used. So you will know the not used position and there'll be four other possibilities where it could be used. <clears throat> Here's an example. Um, my first word guess was the word ridge. And we got uh, I and D in gold and G in an E in green. So that tells us that an I, D and E are used. I then guessed doggy. And for you Westerner, Westerners, that's uh, not a small canine, but a, it's a doggy and a doggy is a, a calf. It's a small cow. 
So in this case, we know the DOI and E, then I guess diode. And that told me that D and E were in the two final positions. And it also lets me know that the I is in use, but it's not in the second column. And the O is in use, but it's not in the third column. So those are big clues where you know to use the letter, but where not to place it. And my final guess was oxide, and that was a winner. At the bottom, they show a little keyboard where you make your selections. And fortunately, they highlight the letters in there in, uh, in the same colors. So you make your first couple of guesses, And then from the letters that are uh, not colored, you can make your additional letter guesses for more words. Uh, the word list of common words that will be used is about uh, two, about 2,900, about 2,900. And the total word set is about 13,000 words. Uh, uh, many of the 13,000 words are totally obscure words that you never heard of, never realized, but they do exist in some standard dictionary. This is a quick snapshot of the words that are used for uh, your challenge words, such things as crust, stool, colon, abase, marry, react. The way these words are selected was that the guy who created the game went to his girlfriend and she scanned through the 13,000 total words and picked out the ones that were common and easy to recognize. So it's okay to guess obscure words that'll give you a clue maybe on what words could be used, um, but always uh, try to go with the most common ordinary words you can think of. So our challenge for today was uh, we're on our pathway to try to build an automatic solver for the Wordle game. And so this is probably the last key step and that is to develop an alphabetic grid. That is a grid of the full alphabet that can encapsulate the clues that you develop sequentially by guessing. So when you test an unknown word against a known word, the system gives you the clues on what's green and what's gold. So on the grid, you want to note the letters by their location that are green. So in other words, if you get a green letter on the grid, you want to tag where it is located, what its position is, and note the fact that it is in the exact green position. If you get a clue that a letter is gold, on your grid also, you want to mark it in such a way that you know where it could be used and where it is not used. In other words, a gold clue says this letter is used, but you guessed it in the wrong column. So it's sort of a negative clue. And so the whole goal on this is to sequentially improve the grid. And as you apply new words against the grid, more letters will become, uh, become green. And when all five letters are green, you have an exact match. So the optimization is maximize the number of green letters by sequential guests. So here's the grid I came up with. This is the empty uh, report grid as it would start out, and it's abbreviated. It has the full alphabet from A through Z. In the uh, usage column is a uh, binary encoded bit. Uh, uh, this will contain combinations one, two, and four, and we'll see how those combinations work out. So we'll, we'll see uh, small integers as a result of what the usage is uh, between numbers one through one and five. In the allowed column, we have the letter positions in our uh, guesses and a, a flag or a code in the allowed shows you where the uh, letters could be, uh, could be utilized. In the required column, a flag or a marker there will show you where a letter must be utilized. So as you choose sequential words, you'll be using letters uh, from other words that optimize the number of required uh, uh, usages. At the bottom, we see the status as shown with the arrows uh, pointing to the, uh, the status line or the usage line. The uh, gold words are marked in that allowed column. At the bottom, we see the green words are marked into the required column. So here's a test word we're gonna use. Now these are for testing purposes. This is not a real game. 
but our unknown word in this case is going to be A C C B E. And our guess in this case is going to be A B C C D. These are to illustrate the combinations and to test to make sure that our process is working correctly. In fourth, here's our outer loop. Uh, we, we do set up the variables and the tables, but set up exclamation point, cleans the environment up, and then by letter goes through uh, the five letters in our unknown, in our, um, in our guess word. So the code for colon by letter is simply uh, three do loops. Uh, the range of the do loops is zero through four. The range is zero through five. It'll let us test positions uh, zero through four, columns zero through four. First, we'll do the, the uh, green letters because these are the most restrictive and contain the most information. Letters that are not in green will then be tested to see are they having, are they gold? And a clean up at the end, if none of these conditions are met, we want to process the uh, letters that were guessed that were not used at all. So here's our uh, results matrix after uh, the, the, the first test of the first column. This is uh, testing the, uh, the uh, column number one in uh, binary, it would be the zeroth column. And, and there's an A in the unknown word and an A in the guess, therefore we got a green match. Under usage at the top, we see the uh, value two has been ORed into the usage column and a flag has been put under the required at uh, the first column position. The flag that is actually in the required uh, uh, code matrix is, uh, is, uh, is a hexadecimal FF, but for display purposes, I translated into the code letter itself. So in the allowed and required columns, uh, internally our, uh, our uh, hex value of zero and FF. So down at the bottom, we have guessed correctly the A in both, uh, in the column one in both unknown and guessed. And so the little green arrow directs us to the right. And we now go back to that original input and we, we've, we take the letter A away and put a zero in its place. We take the, uh, the guess A away, put a one in its place. These are essentially erasing those letters or marking them as used. So they will not be used in future comparisons. For the green words, here is the logic. Uh, remember, this is done five times, once for each position. So for the ith position, we compare that guess letter to the same position in the unknown letter. If they're equal, then as we saw, we just OR in a, a binary two into the usage byte. We put an FF into the required field, again, in the proper uh, byte or column position. And at the bottom, we cancel the uh, guess and the unknown letters. This is, is uh, quite straightforward. There's only one match allowed per pass or per uh, position. And this is the actual fourth code. We can see we uh, access the uh, unknown word. We do a plus C fetch, gets the letter. Alpha converts the, heck, the uh, ASCII to uh, integer zero through 25. This is a position in the grid. We recover a guess letter, likewise convert it from ASCII to a uh, grid position and uh, preserve them and make a comparison. If they are equal, then we, we put a two into the usage column that uh, dupe two or usage writes a two into the usage uh, uh, column. And then the FF, uh, following down required right field writes the FF into that letter's green field. Finally, at the bottom, we go a zero to unknown and a one to guess, which cancels these uh, letters for future use. Uh, this is, is uh, quite straightforward, follows the grid uh, display exactly. The gold letters are a little bit more complicated because these have the negative characteristic. We know a letter is used, but we don't know where it is used. And so we have to allow for this negative information. So in the uh, guess case, if you notice at the bottom, the B is shown in, uh, in uh, red because we got a match on the B 
in the second guess column and it matches with the fourth column in the unknown. So it's on a diagonal. So we know the B is used and we also know it is not used in the second column, but we don't know where it is used. So therefore it's coded in the grid by putting a one under usage and on the allowed column, we show that the B could be used in the first, the first, third, fourth, and fifth columns because we have a BBB there. And there is a dot in the allowed field under the second column because the, the letter was tested there, but it was verified it was not used in that position. So again, our grid has been updated to this new information. At the bottom right, we've canceled the B uh, in the unknown word and we've canceled the B in the guess word. So we've updated our grid to the second letter used. And here is uh, the logic I gave it uh, in, uh, in words. In this case, we're determining the letter's grid position. And then remember, now we have to scan over all five unknown letters. We're not making a letter to letter comparison. We're making a one to five comparison. So if the uh, unknown letter matches, if a guess letter matches one of the unknowns, we get an equality signal. And if this was the first use, we, we set the allowed field all full of Fs because it could be in any one of those five positions. And then we mark a one into usage. And then the next step after the then, we do set the allowed byte to this letter to a one, uh, to a zero. Remember then the uh, allowed field is all set to Fs. We go into this single column and set that, uh, that field to zero, which says the letter is not used in this position. The uh, four remaining continue as Fs. And then at the bottom, we cancel the guest and cancel the unknown letters to prevent repeated comparison. And the fourth code reads very close to the pseudocode. And normally in this work, I always write down the pseudocode and then I sit there and, re and replace the pseudocode uh, uh, sentences with the fourth code. So at the top portion, we've accessed the guess and the unknown. We've done the comparison. We determine the first usage. If the first usage has occurred, we write a bunch of FFs into those fields. Uh, uh, I had to do it in two sections. There's, uh, there's uh, four bytes of, of FFs. Uh, followed by a single byte of Fs for a total of five bytes. We, uh, we OR a one into the usage field indicating that it's a uh, gold usage. Then uh, we put a zero into the allowed column. That again marks the column in which it is not used. And finally at the bottom with the unknown and the guest shown in red, that's where we cancel the uh, input information. So the pseudocode matches the exact code that we've just shown. Now, what happens if we get both cases, if we have a, a, a letter that has double usage? Well, in this case, we have that for C. So the first thing that happens with C is we do the, the uh, green test. And the green test reveals that there is a C in the third column of the unknown and a C in the third column of the guess. So I, a um, one, a, 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 pardon me, a two gets ORed into the usage. And over on the required field, I, uh, we have a C in the third column, which indicates that we do know that the letter is present and required to be in the third column. The pass coming through later for gold then recognizes that there is actually a C in the fourth column of the guess, which matches a C in the second column of the unknown. So again, we don't know that it's used in the second column of the unknown. All we know is that's used and it's that's not used in the fourth column. So if you go back and look under the allowed uh, column, run down the allowed column and you'll see a ccc.cc. It says then in the allowed column, uh, C could be in the first, second, third, or fifth positions, and it is not used in the fourth position. So, uh, and now the uh, usage column has gone from one to, uh, from two to three. And uh, again, remember these are actually bitwise uh, encoding uh, in that usage column. So there's our later uh, clue, very powerful. We're now learning where the letters uh, could be used, 
shall not be used and must be used. Three cases. We're getting close to the end here. In this case, the letter D, which is in the guess fifth column, was tested and it was not used. And D is not used in the unknown. Therefore, the usage value gets set to four and no entries are made in the allowed or required. Again, one more piece of information. We now know that uh, uh, D has not been used and no subsequent words that we test should have a D in them. The uh, no usage, I guess, is pretty simple. Uh, we, uh, we scan across the, uh, uh, or we look at the, at the ith letter. If it still holds an ASCII letter, it means it has not been used. If it contains a zero or a one, it has been used and been canceled. But if it still holds an ASCII letter, that is greater or equal to a capital A, it's not been used. And so we simply or a four into the usage byte. Only, only one action is taken. And implicitly, oh, and this is the actual code. So we uh, go into the guess uh, uh, array, pick out the nth entry, duplicate it, check it against as ASCII A as it equal to or greater. If so, we then uh, or a four into the usage. And the final implication is that if none of these tests have been performed on a word, the usage remains as zero. And that test tells us that the word has, the letter has been untested. So if you look at the bottom right, you'll see that that final uh, E in the unknown word has never been tested. And we don't know where a leader E is, or we do not know if it's used or not. All we know is it is untested. So if we're selecting words in the future, number one, we don't want to select any words that have a four in them because those have been tested and not used. And we want to be testing words that have a zero or a one, two, or three, because uh, they have been uh, tested. Uh, they are, either have not been tested or they've been tested and we know where they are. So again, our grid is getting smarter all the time. This is an example now of uh, real life where we're testing the word beach. We're guessing the word beach. And the word we're trying to determine is scabs, S-C-A-B-S. So we see in uh, the grid under letter A, it's a usage of two, which says it is uh, green. And it tells us there's an A in the third column position. Uh, for the letter B, uh, it's telling us that it's a, uh, a um, gold usage and it is not used in the B is not in the first column position, but it could be in the second, third, fourth, or fifth. And finally, uh, the, uh, the, there's another letter, the C. Again, it's a, a gold usage and it is not in the fourth column. At the bottom right, we see the result uh, as these are canceled. Uh, oh, also then uh, if you go in the grid on E, E is classed as a four and H is classed as a four because in the word beach, the E is not used and the H is not used. So again, we see on a very dynamic basis, the grid is being updated based on the clues. To a first approximation, this is an expert system that we're training on uh, clues from what can be allowed and not allowed. So that is my presentation. Uh, We've uh, we developed this grid. We sequentially can test it against letters. And I propose that uh, next month's challenge, and if we have any more, we can go into them also, but at least one would be to uh, build our tool word set to try to create a full Wordle solver. In that case, the process would be to accept data from files, which we did a couple of months ago. We format them for analysis. We're performing the analysis which you see now, and then we want to report the solution. So do I have any questions on this presentation? I see we're all shocked into stunned silence. Uh, do we have any, I, I jumped right into this. Do we have any other people who are participating in this month's challenge? 
Give the usual sign, wave your hand, make noise, do something. I admit that this series of challenges are getting fairly esoteric because like so much we do in fourth, we're doing what I'm interested in. And right now I'm interested in Wordle. So we've been doing a lot of challenges around Wordle. <laughs> it's, it's kind of an acquired taste, I assume. Um, do we have any suggestions for future uh, challenges? Generally, we like things that are math oriented that uh, are to some degree visual. Um, I, actually, this morning, I haven't had time to go and do this, but this morning I, I started playing around uh, with it. So, um, and and actually, one of the things is I, I I find this most interesting because it can challenge the total word set of twelve thousand words can can test uh, my the limits of, of what Cozy can handle. But um, yeah, I think it's it's worth. I, let me show you what I did a, a while ago. Um, so let me just share my screen. And I take it here's, um, I, I went and, and actually just to go and show how um, I, uh, I, I remembered that we pulled up uh, the wordle thing before so i found when when we had it i found where the, uh, the i i know i'd stored the uh, the table somewhere so i've stored the table of 12000 words and actually what i did is i just sort of chose an arbitrary word found event and equal c goes and shows where the the word the letters in event are in in all of the the 12000 words and then uh, just going and um, uh, adding up how many are are together. Did I hit that? That shouldn't be taking so long. Did I do that? I'm not sure why this is hung. I do not understand that. That's too bad. Ah, foo, it, it, it just screwed up my, my um, uh, uh, stored copy. So, and I, but that's why, like I say, in any case, the thing is to go and I, I just went and, and, okay, here's where all the letters are. And you can see in that original thing and then pick out the words in the table. And um, last time I executed, it worked. This time online, it didn't. So that's, uh, that's, that's my <laughs> presentation. Uh, I'll shut up. Okay, Bob, thank, thank you for the, for the try there. Uh, you get a gentleman's C for the, for the attempt. Uh, um, I will make a couple of- feel, How would ahead, we say. feel about doing uh, this challenge Again, next month, I, I had two thoughts. One is that Bob could, uh, could have a finished product by then and, and show us just exactly what he meant uh, in a limited time span. Uh, and two, uh, Brad could take a crack at it. I always enjoy seeing Brad's code, or at least I make believe really hard, but never mind. Uh, I'm always jealous of Brad's code. How's that? Yes. Uh, the other, the other thing I had in mind was for a longer term thing. There have been some presentations in the in the uh, past that I wouldn't mind revisiting as challenges. Uh, Towers of Hanoi uh, comes to mind. I guess it was Peter Midnight's famous. Uh, was that an article in fourth? Uh, fourth dimensions, or was it just a uh, meeting presentation? Uh, but uh, that's the my favorite example of an actual thing uh, written in uh, in that style. Uh, we uh, also have uh, 
back in the dark ages, there was this scientific American uh, puzzle uh, on balancing uh, articles on a beam. And I think Dwight wrote some code. I found like one or two pages uh, of, a, of a slightly longer thing. Uh, that might be uh, a challenge worthy of us. If somebody has access to the archives of Scientific American and is willing to uh, help me uh, unearth that, uh, communicate with me directly. And uh, as always, I encourage all of you to think about this. If something uh, comes to you, uh, communicate it to me uh, or uh, to Bill, and uh, we'll see if we can get that to converge. Good. Uh, I'll make a, thank you. I'll make a, a couple of, of Wordle background statements. Uh, a uh, fairly substantial article was put out about it uh, uh, sometime last spring, uh, end of the winter. And one fellow did analysis on it, and he found that using his algorithms, he could always get an answer within seven guesses. And only a handful of words, 10 or 20 some words required all seven, that he was able to write a program that would get almost to get 99.9% .9 within the six guess uh, limit. I found, uh, my wife and I go in competition with it. So she has a, a word or two she used at the start. And then she tries to go letter by letter using clue, heading asymptotically toward a solution. Uh, I've taken us a, a little more, what I regard as elegant approach, because I take a word that has very, very heavy correlation with all the other words. And then I use two negative correlation words. I learned two following words that have no correlation with the first word. And by these three words, I've actually analyzed 88% of all English letter usage. So I always have three guesses, which get me an 88 percentile score. And then I only have four guesses left to try to solve the, the, uh, the puzzle. And so I think uh, at least the first the first word ought to be a positive word. The second word ought to be a negative word. And after that, it's a question mark. Uh, so anyone else have any general comments on Wordle? Please come now. Something that you may have uh, encountered, may like, is a derivative of Wordle. It's called Nerdle. And it plays the same, but not with letters, with words, but with equations. So um, you have an uh, eight character equation that you need to guess with the four operators plus equal. And again, you have six guesses. Um, I think building a solver for that would be yet again one um, sort of one level more complex. But it's a, it's a game that I highly enjoy. I'll, I'll uh, just add the the link here to the to the chat. Let's see, where are we? Nerdlegame.com. I haven't played it for a while, but uh, uh, I had a, a while where I was um, sort of the German, the Austrian, the English, Wordle plus the Nerdle sort of was my daily diet. <laughs> That's outstanding. That's really good. We're going to, we'll look up Nerdle too. As you say, it's intellectually a couple of levels above because uh, not only do you have a vertical relationship, but you have a horizontal relationship. Uh, very, very, very good. Uh, any other comments? Oh, uh, the, the Wordle game was picked up uh, late last year or early this year across the world because the author made no copyright or trademark restrictions on it. And so other people picked it up and have translated it into other languages. So if you look around, you should be able to find Wordle in your own domestic language. Uh, and there are other variations on the game. So it's, um, uh, it's, it's simple to begin with, but yet uh, gives a huge range of possibilities to end up with.
So any other comments uh, before we pass back to mission control? All right, we thank you. So open season next month, uh, whatever 